trash will take center stage at a town council workshop tonight. The Agricultural Commission hopes to expand community gardens in town. And we learn more about the new day program for the homeless in Hyannis. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Thursday, July 24th, 2014. I'm Sarah Mannell. Trash talk continues at Town Hall tonight. Town Council is scheduled to convene in workshop session for discussions on solid waste management. Director of Public Works Dan Santos is expected to outline details on a new trash disposal contract. The Renewable Energy Commission and Comprehensive Financial Advisory Committee will also address councillors. The workshop will convene at 6 tonight in the Selectman's Conference Room. The Agricultural Commission wants to increase the number of community gardens in town. Councillor Phil Wallace is the town council liaison for the committee. Wallace says placing community gardens near the airport could enhance the surrounding area. Well, the, with respect to the airport, you know, they did um, say that all the uh, gardens that would be considered would be on the outside of the fence. Yeah. They said also, um, they, I, they would like us to send them a note or a letter of what we're proposing, whether it's vegetables, flowers, or what we want to grow. And we do have to get that note off to them and send it to Bud Burrow, Burrow and uh, the uh, airport general manager. And he'll take it to the commission. If, if there's merit, he'll take it to the commission. They'll act on it. Mm -hmm. But I believe that we'll probably end up with a site visit is to find what actual parcels on the outside of the fence are, would be suitable for farming or gardens, community gardens. The committee yeah. also talked about other options like planting wildflowers. We thought for some of this space, um, and I think Massachusetts can learn a lot from actually New Hampshire, the way they manage the um, middle of the, the highways. They're all seeded with wildflowers, yes. which are beautiful low maintenance, they receive themselves, they're drought resistant. Even if we were to put in some soil and create some type of wildflower meadow, there, there's really no maintenance to it except for the trash that people litter out of their cars and that blows into there. But, you know, those are good for um, just the environment, the bees, um, and, you know, even if they were to just do that and, and instead of the hydro seeding they spray the wildflower mixture so you know it's just what they load in those trucks at that given point so and slowly the, uh, I mean it's not view of the agricultural not, commission but the agricultural but, commission but I think also sometimes it's important to think a little bit outside the box if there's no interest in that right. then at this point you know maybe make a meadow instead of making more grass well, for the town to mow and I'm sure they know that, that they have options it's just a question of Time and resources, and if 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 we can, you know, help with that and turn it into a public benefit outside the, the fence, best, that the looks best pretty nice. The committee voted to send a letter to airport manager Bud Briant detailing their proposal. The Noah Day Shelter in Hyannis will be open 24 hours a day, at least for another year. Recently, the state announced a $200,000 grant to pay for the program. Barnstable This Morning host Sarah Colvin talked about the effort with Heidi Nelson, CEO of Duffy Health Center, and Elizabeth Werfbane, Executive Director of the Business Improvement District. We share a portion of that interview with you now. Talking about a really important issue today, obviously, um, you know, with the, the homeless uh, on, on Main Street in Hyannis, or really on Cape Cod, has, has been an issue um, long, it's, it's a long-standing issue. And recently, the NOAA shelter downtown has opened its doors 24 hours, which already has, has made a big impact. So, I mean, Heidi, from your perspective, wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the background of this and, and why we're seeing uh, an increase in the hours for that shelter, that particular sure. shelter. Well, the goal of what it is that we're trying to do is really twofold. One is to try to create a safe place for people to be during the day and out of the elements and the inclement weather, but second and almost more importantly is to have a location where we can 
find people who are homeless easily and may have untreated mental health and substance abuse issues so that we can reach out to them and provide services to them. Indeed, and this all, I mean, the, the Main Street Initiative was it started several years ago and that uh, did a lot and this is kind of building on that. So can you talk a little bit about the Main Street Initiative and how this evolved from that? Sure. Um, we, uh, let's see, it was probably, well you, you can talk about the, the community meeting that sort of spurned the, mm. the Main Street mm. Initiative. There was a lot of About six years ago anger. at the Federated yeah. Church, we had, there was a community meeting. It was a Main Street driven meeting um, where, you know, many of the, the business leaders but also the residents of the town were um, in a quandary as to what to do about um, you know working with the shelter and the the problems that were on the street um, and so it became apparent that there were two camps two sides um, and they were they were polarized but what we've learned over time through this Main Street Initiative group and meeting is that we all really have a lot in common we all want the same thing what Heidi said we want safety for the client and we also want a um, you know a safe community so just it was twofold. So the Main Street Initiative really was successful in bringing people together to the table to come to the common, uh, the, our commonness. So having representation from the law enforcement and the businesses and the human service agencies and really political leaders that kind of brought everybody to the table. And it was an amazing transformation through that process we identified 93 individuals who were problematic on Main Street and over an 18 month period worked to reach out to those individuals and help move them into housing and services and so over the course of that time we actually housed 48 people Wow! and we reduced the number of on the list of people from 93 down to about 25 where it kind of remains today it kind of bounces back and forth between around 12 to up to 27 um, people who are sort of being followed and so the idea is that if we have yet another option or another opportunity that we can get that number of people down even farther. Absolutely and, and what are the what are the biggest challenges in, in looking at the problem because I think it's it's an issue that touches so many aspects of, our, of our, our community here whether it's you know the need to help these people who find themselves out on the streets to making uh, the, the business uh, owners happy to finding the, the services that that need so to uh, it's, it's a challenging issue so talk to me a little bit about some of the the challenges that you faced as we as you, and continue to face as you work to solve the problem well I, I think that balancing the the um, the needs of uh, the public are very important with the client um, uh, as we know when there's mental illness I mean Heidi is an expert on that uh, as well as addictions involved sometimes the client doesn't know how to be helped or does, isn't open to it. So that becomes, you know, a, a challenge for, um, for the facility. And then the types of facility that exist, we ha happen to have had an emergency shelter that uh, didn't really have so much going on in the services department. So it was really um, a, a, a safety piece more than a, um, uh, a, a vehicle for, um, you know, for people to participate in their own recovery. So that was um, a piece that had to evolve and that was a challenge to work with the, the cultures of the existing institutions and come to that conclusion. This is what's happening, this is why we have you know, this issue here and, and now it's time to evolve. One of the really interesting outgrowths of this project has been the cooperation between the human service agencies and the Barnstable Police. Um, we have always had a number of officers on the beat who were really good with our clients and um, established trusting relationships with them. Um, but now this, uh, essentially through this process, the town has created what's called a community impact unit. So there are three uniformed officers whose job it is to patrol Main Street, but um, also to reach out to people, find out what's going on, finding out what they need. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable, this morning, weekdays at 7 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we have our arts and culture segment. We will chat with Director of Leisure Services, Patty Machado. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable today, I'm Sarah Mannell.